the magnificent skyline of downtown Big D, Dallas, Texas, and nearby in Irving, Texas Stadium. And this will hold the largest crowd ever to see a football game in this locale today for the 49ers against the Cowboys. I'm Pat Summerall, and neither one of these two, these two teams has forgotten what happened in the championship game in the NFC last year at Candlestick Park. Dallas, of course, won. Can they do it again? That's a big, big question in the minds of both. With me, of course, John Madden. And, John, the 49ers criticized a little bit lately as not being the same team that they were then. What do you think? Well, it's probably true. They're probably not in sync like they were a year ago. But one of these days they're going to explode, and that could very well be today. And, you know, they've thought about the Cowboys, and they know that if they want to be a champion again, they have to beat the Cowboys. I look back to that championship game, and they say what went wrong, and they, and they boil it down to two things. They had four turnovers. And that game, they said they can't turn the ball over today. And the other thing is when they got inside the 20, they didn't attack the end zone. Steve Young told us yesterday when they get inside that 20, they're going to go for the end zone and not settle for field goals. And as far as the Cowboys are concerned, a lot of people said after they beat Buffalo in the Super Bowl last year, this is the next dynasty in pro football. What do you think? I'll tell you, offensively to me, they look great right now. I think Troy Aikman is the best football in is the best quarterback in all of football. He just looks great. He's going as hot as you can. And then, of course, they get Emmett Smith back, and now he's healthy. And for the first time, when you get the passing and the running going, I don't know that anyone is going to stop this Cowboy offense. Well, it's a perfect day for football. The Cowboys have won the toss. They're always, of course, this time of day here at Texas Stadium. If it's a bright day, is the problem with the the sun in the receivers in this case the Cowboys eyes as they try to get a forward pass or accept the kickoff Mike Cofer about to kick it off for San Francisco and that sun will not be a problem an overcast day back deep Kevin Williams and Kenneth Gant for Dallas Cofer set to kick it off well maybe the official standing down between the two return men is still holding things up. The crowd ready. Now they've got the signal. Well, no, they haven't yet. Now I think we're just about ready to start. What to both of these certainly and to many who follow pro football is the biggest game of the year. That's what they were waiting for. The speakers to go up and Kofer might have hit him. Will return it from the two. Gant to the 35. Stopped by the kicker, Kofer. Aikman leads the offense, and as John Madden said a minute ago, he is as hot as anyone has ever been. In front of him, a fine, big, big offensive line. And those who will handle the ball, Emmett Smith, of course, Daryl Johnston blocks for him, Mike Lurvin, and Alvin Harper, the wide receivers, and Jaden Novacek, the tight end. Flag on the play. Holding by the receiving team number 95 during the return. 10-yard penalty. Be first down. Referee is Ed Hockley. Chad Hennings was called for holding on the opening kickoff. So the Cowboys' first possession will take place back at their own 10-yard line. Make it the 11, just outside the 10. Aikman, the numbers are phenomenal. He's going to throw on first down. He's going to have it complete to Harper on first down. About eight. The 49er defensive unit. This is the part of that team that has seen some major changes. Fagan is back, stubble field in the middle. The four linebackers, Johnson and Kelly outside, Romanowski and DeLong back. Griffin, Hanks, McDonald, and Davis. The secondary. It will be second and two as Aikman brings him out. Emmett Smith and Daryl Johnson. That's Novacek on the move. The Moose. For a Dallas first.
first down. Daryl Johnson tripped up by Stubble Field. You know, the 49ers are, have always been a three man linebacker. They're starting here with a four man line. You see, they're putting Ted Washington and Stubble Field both inside, and then Fagan here and Dennis Brown out here. So that's a new thing. I think that they, they're so concerned about stopping the run, they didn't think they could do it with their three man line. So on running down, they're probably going to use some four man line today. That was Jim Price, the backup tight end, the man in motion. This is Emmett Smith. Smith for another Dallas first down and Aikman is two for two. Yeah, and that's a problem that you have with the Dallas Cowboys and with Aikman and Smith and all the receivers and a good offensive line. You can't gang up on anything. You can't gang up on the run because he'll pass and beat you. You can't gang up on the pass because Emmett Smith can beat you. You know, and then you can't gang up on any one guy because Aikman will always find the open guy and go to him. And that's what he has been so masterful at doing. Not just this year, down the stretch last year. Smith to the left. And that Smith bounces close to another Cowboy first down, tripped up by Merton Hanks. The ball almost bounced out of there at the end, but the Cowboys don't seem to have any trouble running against this four-man line. Again, the 49ers got Kevin Fagan back this week. He's playing that right end. That's right where they went. They went right at Kevin Fagan. And of course, they got Stubblefield and Ted Washington in there as tackles, trying to get bigger guys in there to plug up that middle where Emma Smith usually runs. Second and short. And again, it's Price in motion. And Emmett Smith brings it to the outside. The ball's knocked loose. He saw the tackle. Picked up by the fight up 49ers, Eric Davis. Davis in for a 49er touchdown. That's what they said. They said the thing that beat them in the championship game was the turnovers. That the 49ers gave four turnovers. The Cowboys didn't. The 49ers felt they had to get the turnovers today and not give up the turnover. In the first drive, they come up with a big one. This is the kind of tackle we're seeing more and more of, breaking that ball loose with the other hand, just like that. Well, what you do is you go in with, with one hand. That was John Johnson, number 55, and you grab him with one hand like you're going to tackle him, and then you always put that chop in there, the first guy there, and try and knock the ball out of there. Kofer for the extra point. The 49ers break it on top, and they lead 7-0. 47-yard touchdown run on the fumble recovery. Boy, did that quiet this crowd down. Though. They may be big, but they're silent at the moment. Here is Steve Young's offensive package. He, of course, the quarterback. You forget he used to be with Tampa Bay. Wallace McIntyre, Cipolo, Ralph Tam, and Harris Barton, his offensive line. The two wide receivers, Rice and Taylor, Brent Jones, the tight end, Logan and Waters are the two running backs. But it'll be a while before they get the ball and operate behind that unit. Well, so that's, that's a way to do it. You know, first of all, we talk about the script. Watch Johnny John, John Johnson knock the ball out there, and then a perfect bounce. Eric Davis was coming up, and the ball just bounced up there right about knee high, and he caught it in stride. Watch it. There's the script. Now watch the bounce. The ball comes out of there, and then straight up in the air, and he catches it on that second hop right there at the knees. Now, how many times might you expect to see an object shaped like that bounce straight up like that twice? Only on artificial turf. Right. If this were played on grass, that ball would have bounced sideways and maybe even gotten out of bounds. There are no undefeated teams now. Pittsburgh knocked off New Orleans convincingly. Kofer's kick. Williams watches it roll out of bounds, and then Cowboys will take over at their 35. George Seifert. You know, George Seifert tried to keep that defense secret all week, you know, and it was whether Todd Kelly was going to be the linebacker or the elephant or was going to be Martin Harrison, and that had kind of become the thing. But really what he was doing is working on a four-man defensive line. You see it right there. 
Dennis Brown here, Stubberfield there, and Washington, and then Kevin Fagan over there. So this is a new defensive look for the 49ers. Other than the fumble, the Cowboys handled it very well. Aikman, again complete to Johnston. Cut down by Davis. When you hear that sound, that's the moose. Last week, uh, they started out the game against the Indianapolis Colts, and they they gave the ball about four or five times to Daryl Johnston, who doesn't get it a lot. One of the reporters after the game asked Aikman, were you featuring the moose? And Aikman said, let me tell you this. The Dallas Cowboys will never feature the moose. Very few times. What he does so well is block for Emmett Smith. And obviously good pass receiver. Here's Emmett. We welcome those of you who watch New Orleans and Pittsburgh. The final score was the Steelers 37, New Orleans 14 here in Dallas. The score is 7 0. The 49ers lead it. A 47 yard fumble recovery by Eric Davis. I don't know if quarterbacks, we just saw a, start, a shot of Steve Young there. I don't know if quarterbacks like this. They like to lead, they like to be ahead, but I don't know that they like to come out there and stand this long in the sideline and not get in the game yet. I know I wouldn't like it. Here's Aikman. Gets it loose to Harper. Harper close to midfield. I beg your pardon, this is Irvin. Michael Irvin. 80 is Harper. 88 is Irvin. Yeah, Michael Irvin does this so well. You know, not only get open, but he's so big and strong that once he catches the ball, he doesn't have to be wide open, and then he'll make a move, and he's tough to tackle. You know, because he's big, strong, quick, and he just doesn't go down easily. And the first guy there does not usually get Michael Irvin. That's that pattern we've seen so often in recent weeks where the bunch of receivers come off the ball together. Two go deep, one goes wide, as he did then. Johnston again in motion. Outside to Emmett Smith. Emmett spun forward, run out of bounds by John Johnson. You know, one thing that this four-man line of the 49ers is doing to the Cowboy offense, it's making them attack the perimeters more. With Emmett Smith, they've usually been like an inside running team and a cutback team. Now, so far, they've been attacking the perimeter. You know, getting the ball outside on the swing passes. And when Emma Smith has been running, he's been running to the outside. Well, if they can make him do that, part of the plan at least has succeeded. They'd like more pressure on Aikman. Emma Smith left. To about the 42. Yeah, Emmett Smith said that running is kind of a simple thing. He said you just look where they got all their guys and you run the other way. And then as you run and you look and if they're all flowing one way you cut back. If they're all blocked you just keep going that way. He said most of the time he'll look right at the center and nose tackle and read that initially and that will determine which way he's going to cut. If the center gets him going one way he said I'm going the other way. Third down, about three. They want to throw it. 49ers blitz it. Pass is caught by Irvin. First down. Michael Magruder made the stop. And yeah, we talk about Aikman being hot. I mean, he just looks. Remember a few years ago how Joe Montana looked where he'd look perfect and you'd wonder what can you do to stop him and and Aikman has that look about him now that no matter what they do on deep that that was against the nickel there long yardage short yardage he has an answer for you. Norv Turner the offensive coordinator. Well, let's listen to the referee first. Illegal formation by the offense number 79 was lined up in an eligible position. He had an ineligible number. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Well, 79, of course, is Eric Williams, the, the big right tackle. 
And what they must be saying is that he's too far back that he's in the backfield. And that, and that would be too many men in the backfield. I think that's picky. He looks to me like he was okay. I mean, on third down, they don't get in a stance and they all get off a little. That looked like a picky ball. Looked as if the other tackle, to an A, was further back than he was. And he is on this play, too. Aikman chased. Pass is caught just at the last second by Kevin Williams, and he's knocked out of bounds short of a first down. Pass to Kevin Williams. I'll tell you, the one thing, they, they got some pressure here. Watch number 53, Bill Romanowski. You see, they don't get him blocked on the blitz. Now, on that one, that was third and long. Aikman didn't want to take that sack or that hit, so he really just threw that one away. So John Chet. The new Dallas punter comes on. Dexter Carter back deep for San Francisco. Dexter Carter had a big one last week. He must be going for a block. Dexter they Carter's be. running up. They don't have anyone back there. They got to be. There's going no for one back. Got. Jeff got it out of there, and he's down in the flag as they ran into the punter. Meantime, the ball is down at about the one yard line by Elvis Patterson. But this is going to be brought back, and the 49ers are going to be caught for roughing the kicker or running into the kicker. But again, this is a big penalty because it doesn't give them a first down. See, because they still have to get the first down, and they were like fourth and, and what? Fourth and about eight there. About eight, it's a yeah. five-yard penalty. Personal won't be a foul. first down. Roughing the kicker if by the defense. Now it is 15 a first yard down. penalty. Automatic first down. If it's oh, roughing. It's for rough. It's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be a first down. That, that that would qualify as being rough. I know it. That was. When you run into the guy and you don't mean it, they just gave you five and a fourth and eight. It wouldn't have been a first down. But that was Martin Harrison. And that I think is a 15-yard penalty. So it's not again automatic first down, but the 15-yard penalty gives the Cowboys a first down. They're at the 49ers 32 now. The 49ers were just trying to be aggressive on that play, and they were too aggressive. Dexter Carter came up. They had all 11 men up in the front, no return man back, and they were going for the block or nothing. Emmett Smith is the deep back, and Novacek is in motion, and Aikman back to throw. Incomplete. Intended for Irvin. That's the first incompletion. Pass intended for Irvin. Don Griffin was the cover man. Defending on the play, number 29, Don Griffin. This isn't how Jimmy Johnson saw this game getting started. You know, it's a little sloppy, and Jimmy Johnson is one of the neatest guys in the world, and he thinks, and he likes everything to be neat and perfect. And when the other team picks up one of your fumbles and scores, and then, you know, you have a penalty when you get a first down, you have another penalty. This isn't the kind of game he likes, even though that last penalty benefited him. Second and ten. Aikman hammered out of bounds by Eric Davis. Incomplete. Michael Irvin just didn't bend over enough, it looked like, on that play, Pat. He's running and out, and you're going to see him out here. Now, he's going to come out and then turn right here. And it looked like the ball is just about knee high. And see, he should come back right there. And I don't know if he took his eyes off it or didn't put his eyes down there or what, but Michael Irvin, you know, usually catches those kinds. Like he thought he had it. It went right he between his hands. He thought he had it. You're it right. It went right between his legs. Double dip. Third and ten. Long play to Smith. Drag down finally at about the 30. By Romanowski and Terry Hogue. Again, two to the 30 yard line. So, a look at Eddie Murray. He comes onto the field. There's a couple of big plays there by the, the 49ers. Good coverage, and then on third and 10, surprised the Cowboys weren't a little more aggressive. And you know, because Aikman is so hot and has so many tools, you wonder why they don't go for a first down and attack the end zone themselves. Eddie Murray from 48 yards. Novacek holding. That'll get there. And that's good. Eddie Murray puts the Cowboys on the scoreboard. But the 49ers lead 7-3. Six and a half left first quarter.
And the sun, not out brightly as yet, but it's broken through some of the crowd clouds. Biggest crowd ever to see a football game at Texas Stadium. Murray's kickoff to about the two. Cowboys were down in a hurry. But Dexter Carter gets back to the 20. Where Steve Young and the 49ers will take over on offense for the first time. Texas Stadium packed. For the rematch of last year's NFC Championship game. First that was played outdoors at Candlestick after it was rained all week long. This on artificial turf. Here's Steve Young. Outside country to Brent Jones. Here is the Cowboy defense now. Haley and Tolbert start on the outside. They shuffle a lot of people in and out. Maryland and Casillas in the middle. Ken Norton has moved inside the middle linebacker. Dixon Edwards and Darren Smith, the rookie, outside. The secondary, Brown, Everett, Woodson, and Kevin Smith. Second and five. 49ers at the 25. They're on. Young to Rice. Rice to the 40, 49er first down. Steve Young is the number 80, Jerry Rice to the 40 yard line. This is an interesting formation, Pat. You see, Ricky Waters is in the slot here, the halfback, and here is Rice here, so they can run a combination pattern and still have Taylor over on the other side. See, Waters comes out, Rice comes in, and the minute that he passes that first guy, the ball is thrown perfectly. And Rice has now caught a pass in 117 straight games. Young gives to Waters. Waters wrapped up by Colbert. You know, Jerry Rice was talking about his timing really hasn't been in sync with Steve Young like it was in Joe, Mon with Joe Montana. But I think when he's on the left side is when it is in sync. I mean, that play, that slant, that pull or whatever, that was an in-sync play, but Jerry Rice was lined up on the left side. I think where they have their sync problem is when Rice lines up on the right side, and that's where he used to always line up when he was playing with Joe Montana. He is split wide left this time. Logan was the man in motion. Pass incomplete. Intended for water. Bounced up in the air. It looked as if several people had a shot at it. That's the way of a lot of those interceptions to Steve Young this year have come. Yeah, and I would think if you're going to force the ball, and Steve Young forced that one, I think if you're going to force the ball, you don't want to force it to Mark Logan. And if you're going to force the ball, force it to a Jerry Rice or force it to a John Taylor, someone that could really do something, but don't force a two-yard pass to Mark Logan. Third and eight. Young to Jones, complete. First down and more for the 49ers into Dallas territory to the 35. Woodson knocked him out of bounds. They, they, they used to go four wide receivers, and now they leave Brent Jones in with three wide receivers. You see Brent Jones at tight end. He's just going to come up and run it out. He gave a little head fake. Then he went to the outside. That was Darren Woodson, the strong safety co covering him. Darren Woodson went for that head fake. That head fake just frozen yeah, long enough. enough. You don't see guys going, or you don't see too many guys using the old head no, fake you don't. much anymore. You don't see many defensive guys going for him. That's Logan. Over the left side, stopped by Norton. You know, it's interesting, the, the 49ers, again, this is the first time they've had the ball, but they've been using Ricky Waters more as a decoy and using... Mark Logan in the backfield. Waters has been out as a, a slot back and a flanker most of the time. And that's where he goes again. again. Except 
not in the slot. Now he is. Now he and Rice swap places. And he wants to prove that he's as good a running back or better than Emmett Smith. It's going to be tough from the slot back. Young quickly outside Taylor. Larry Brown knocked him out of bounds. Yeah, you talk about a Troy Aikman and you're getting hot. This is the same thing that a Steve Young could do. Yeah, I mean, he could. You see the formation on the right side? Again, that's a decoy. You see Waters is over there. Rice is over there. But this is the side he goes to. You put them over there, and then you get John Taylor isolated on Brown here, and you just give him the ball to the left side one-on-one. -on -one. Rice is left this time, and that's Waters in motion. No backs. And here's Young. He's a back. Young for another first down. Inside the Cowboy 15 to about the 12. And that had to be an organized play because there was no back in the backfield. Waters, Waters starts out, and now he goes in motion. So look what happens. Once he goes in motion, you're going to see that there's no one for the quarterback. So he sees this right here. He's looking for the first hole he can find. He gets a double team from McIntyre, and the hole is between his guard and tackle. But the tough thing is, is when there's no back in the backfield, the only guy that can carry the ball is a quarterback. So even though there's no one on the quarterback, they do key on him a little more. But when you're a ball carrier, an athlete like Steve Young, that's like having another back almost. Yeah, you see, if you look from the end zone here, you'll see Ricky Waters right there, and he just takes off. Now, there's no one in the backfield, so if you're going to run it, it has to be Steve Young. Then when he sees that hole, he's going to take it. Charles Haley uh, just missed it. And they double-teamed Russell Maryland. McIntyre, good job. And then Young had to get away from Haley. Ball's at the 13. Straight ahead, Logan. <laughs> Just outside the 10, stopped by Ken Norton again. You know, this is the area that Steve Young felt that they lost the championship game to the Cowboys in. It. They got down in this area, this red zone, inside the 20, and they settled for field goals rather than attack it. So he said that this game they're going to attack it. So I would expect a second down pass here and a third down. He said, we're gonna, he said we're going to take some shots. I agree with you. Jones in motion. They swing it outside to Brent Jones. Caught by Darren Smith. Well, I think he probably forgot to deal about going for the end zone because yeah, he, he goes did. for the short guy again. Maybe he just told us that. You see, Brent Jones is in motion, and he's just running a little dart pattern out here, and he throws at it again. They just come up with third down. I think... If you're going to attack the end zone, attack the end zone. Got to be in there. Right, and if you're, if you're not going to attack it, then you may as well just run the ball or something. Because now it's third down, now you have to do it. Third and four, that's a little longer than you'd like. Here's Young. Chase, touchdown, Jones, he dropped it. Had it, and it got away. That Russell, was a heck of a play, though, by Steve Young. Russell Maryland was all over it. Yeah, how he did that. I mean, watch it. I mean, this is under pressure. He has pressure. This is a thing that Steve Young can do because he's so strong. He pumps. Now he has a guy hanging on him, and he still throws that ball in there. That was a perfect pass to Brent Jones. I think it surprised Brent Jones. Now, he probably didn't see him because it was, he had two defensive yep. guys on him between him and uh, Steve Young. Kofer from 25 yards. It is good with a lot left. And the 49ers lead it by the score of 10 to 3. 41 seconds left to play in the first quarter at Texas Stadium. The 49ers 10. The Cowboys 3. Kofer just hit on that field goal from 25 yards out. will kick off. Kevin Williams and Kenneth Gann. Back deep for Dallas. Over. Evan Williams. To 
at the 25. Yeah, Pat, we talk about a lot of things that have happened in the biggest crowd here at Texas Stadium. We have a guy today right there, Bill Nader. Today is his 30th anniversary at CBS. Amazing, as young as he looks. <laughs> what a great guy. I mean, you, you, know, you work with a lot of different people, and Bill Nader is, is one of the great ones, one of the real gentlemen. And, and this is his 30th CBS birthday today. Happy birthday, or anniversary, I guess you call it. I guess. A lot of spring in his step. <laughs> First and 10, and Emmett Smith swings to the left. McDonald came up Emmett to make Smith the stop. About three yards. One thing, this, this four-man line or this defensive front early in this game is working for the 49ers because what Emmett Smith likes to do is he likes to, again, run inside between his tackles or start running inside and then cut back. But again, with those big defensive linemen, he's having a tough time finding any running inside. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. San Francisco 10, Dallas 3. Bradshaw. You know, uh, Don Griffin, they they, they, they they finally just got him up, Pat. He was he was down there right on the sideline. He was the guy who was covering Michael Irvin on that completion. He just came off the injured list. He had a pulled groin, and that injury there didn't look like it was the, the same injury. Michael Magruder, number 26, has taken his place. That looked like something was wrong with Griffin's arm or hand. Yeah, in fact, he's, he's holding his right arm now as he's walking off the field. Or... Information we have is it is a dislocated left shoulder. First and ten. Emmett Smith. Cut down by Stubblefield. I think that's one thing again that this 49er four man defensive line has done has taken away the cutback. So now Smith is just taking the ball right at the hole and you see Don Griffin walking off the field there. He's over the years been the best cover corner in the 49ers. And you just tell the way he's walking and shaking his head. Just the look at his yeah. face. He's not going to be back. Irvin is split wide to the left. That's Price in motion. The handoff is to Emmett Smith. Not much. Stopped again by Stubblefield. Dana Stubblefield, another big guy. 49ers number one draft choice. Yeah, yeah, they got big guys in there. I mean, when you put Dennis Brown in there and Ted Washington and Dana Stubblefield, you're talking about all guys over 300 pounds along with Kevin Fagan, who over the years has been a, a great run player. I mean, you've got some beef in there. I mean, you look up there. It's, been, you know, it's going to be tired beef pretty soon because yeah. it's hot down there, and, and the beef looks like it's starting to tire a little. Age, right but. now, they've got the sunshine. Here's Aikman. Canova check. Fumble. I think he fell on it. Out comes the ball. Nova check was down. Now they say incomplete. Jimmy Johnson, you just saw perhaps signal field goal. Yeah, he did. When he saw incomplete, he, he signaled field goal. He wasn't happy about signaling it. But if you look, that's not the kind of start that Jimmy Johnson wanted when his team so far has dropped four passes. Part of it is the Cowboys. Part of it, they've dropped passes. But, they're not, but this 49er defense has played well so far. You might remember last week against the Colts, they faked the field goal and Novacek ran. This time it's on. Eddie Murray, good. So the Cowboys move a little bit closer. It's 10 6. The 49ers lead. Dallas has had the ball 14 minutes and 7 seconds. San Francisco 550. And I think it's going to start to tell on this 49er defense because they, on that last drive, started to tire. You look at Dennis Brown there, he's getting a retake job, but the, the 49ers are going to have to need him the rest of the game. And we, Dexter Carter, deep for the 49ers. Dexter Carter, he is dangerous. He's in danger right now. Joe 
Fish back. And Gant down to make the stop. I'll tell you, I think the biggest collision was with Terry Hogue. It looks like his own man, number 41, Hogue, was coming back there at full speed. And it looks like the collision. Watch Carter here and see if Hogue, as he comes back, there's 41 right there. I mean, he was the first guy that hit him. One of the Cowboys knocked Hogue around and knocked him right into Carter. And Hogue just come two. That's something you don't expect. You know, you're wearing a red jersey. You don't expect the red jersey to fly by you. On first down, Young back to throw it. Has it complete to Brent Jones. Picked up by Thomas Everett. Pass complete to Brent Jones. Went out to the 35. That's the thing about this 49er offense. A lot like the Cowboy offense. You get so concerned with Jerry Rice and John Taylor. Ricky Waters in the backfield that a Brent Jones could sneak a right up the middle on you. They have so many weapons. Both offenses. Yeah, Jones already has four one catches. The, so. One of the 25 second clocks, but one of the others is working, so we'll continue to use the play clocks on the field. What they're saying is those clocks in the end zone either are not working or incorrect. So they'll keep the actual time on the field. Well, they're all working now. Maybe he just had to say that to get him straight down. Yeah, they look right now. Well, one, one, no, one, no, they one, don't. No. Yeah, one isn't working. No. Ricky Waters. Flag on the play. Flag on the Holding play. against the 49ers is going to be called. You know, one thing, this was supposed to be a battle of runners between Ricky Waters and Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith has had a tough time. He's had a fumble, four man line. I think that's only the second time Ricky Waters has carried the ball today. Holding by the offense number 64. 10 yard penalty. Holding Repeat ball against down. Ralph Tam. Yeah, that's an old Bill Walsh thing. I mean, he used to, you know, where teams would say they want to establish the run, then they go to the pass, and Bill Walsh used to establish the pass, and then go to the run later. 49ers may be thinking of that, maybe tiring his defense down and then using the running game and Ricky Waters in the second half. If we can get ahead, tire him with a running attack. Control the clock with a running attack. Young is down, fumble. Cowboys have it. Or did. Now they do. A fumble popped out and the Cowboys got it. Kim Norton on the bottom of the pile. Darren Smith made the recovery, I believe. Norton had an assist. And some anger. Hey, he was really fired up. That was a big play that the Cowboys needed. Again, Ricky Waters is split out as a receiver. I think the Cowboys are starting to just to rush the passer now. They come in a blitz. Haley was the guy that got there. You see Charles Haley. He hit him and then kind of leg whipped him around. Watch Charles Haley, number 94. He comes in there. I think he missed him with his hand, and then he leg whipped him and got him with his right knee his right and knocked leg. the ball out of there with his right foot, maybe. That's a new way of doing it. I tell you, Charles Haley knows how to raise habit. And that's yep. one thing. You, know, you may not have great stats or a lot of sacks, but when you put him on defense, he's a playmaker and a havoc raiser. And in his own way, a leader. Very much a leader. First and ten at the San Francisco 19. That's Price in motion. Fake to Evan Smith. Here's Aitman. Got to take off with it. For about seven. You see old Nate Newton didn't know what it was. He didn't expect Troy Aitman never run. Old Nate Newton is out there leading him. He pulls from the left guard, and old Nate just stands out there blocking and blocking, and there was no one to block, and he wouldn't lead Aikman. So that's what Aikman was mad at. He wanted old Nate to get going. Nate says Rook Troy is not supposed to run. It's too valuable to be doing that. I know. So Nate, Nate just stood out there, and Troy ran right by him, and Nate was still standing there to get a lateral, maybe. Second and four. Nova check in motion. Andrew picked up perhaps a yard, thrown backwards by Tim McDonald. The gift to him and Romanowski. Uh, 
again, I think this, this four-man line is doing the job. They're not giving any cutbacks. If we just watch here, he's in the I formation. He's going to start to the left. And we see right here, we can just stop it right here. We can see all these 49ers in here and all these bodies. They're not giving him any cutback. They're forcing him to go that way. And then when they got him going that way, they're all going that way. And then they can gang tackle and make things happen. Third and four. away from a touchdown and he's having more success throwing to Michael Irvin when Michael Irvin lines up on the left side see a three-step drop just throw it out there that little quicker short out again the ball didn't cross the plane so he tried to get in his right hand so the ball could cross the plane but he had the ball in his left hand first and goal from the one Cowboys move ahead. You're so right about keeping that defense out there a long time. That'll wear on them. And it's starting to show, and again, that's that's a result of a turnover. Remember how this drive started? It started with a turnover. Watch I formation again to the right. You're going to see Daryl Johnston right there get the block right there on Merton Hanks. And then Emmett Smith can just walk it into the end zone. That's why Daryl Johnston is so important to this offense. Murray's extra point is good. So with seven minutes, 22 seconds left in the first half, Cowboys 13, 49ers 10. 13-10, 7-22 left to play in the first half. This is why Kenneth Gant is a, a marked man. When he goes down in the kickoff cover, he does all the celebrating before, and they're going to get him when he comes down. Dexter Carter knocked down inside the 10 by Brock Marion. They made a couple of trades, the Cowboys did. There's Gant. This well, is what you were talking this about. This is before the kickoff coverage. He goes down there, and he gets the fans all excited. Watch him. He'll go in there, and he'll lead the cheers and get them all excited. Now, the kickoff coverage team is watching him, so they're going to get him. <laughs> he goes there. He looks like Hulk Hogan. But I'll tell you one thing. He does it before, but when that ball's kicked off, he goes like that. That guy's a good football player. He really is. First and ten. The 49ers back at their own nine. This is Waters. Ricky Waters out of bounds at about the 15. Ooh, it's coming. Oh. You know what Ricky Waters Ooh. said? And he said, it's coming. Because he's only carried the ball a couple there times. And I think down. they've been using him. They've been using him as a wide receiver and a decoy a lot. And now I think they're going to start. Look, so far he's only rushed the ball two times for nine yards. Emmett Smith has 13 rushes, 48 yards. And, of course, he just scored that touchdown. So I think they're going to get Waters into the game now, out of the decoy and into the running. They have to calm him down a little bit. He gets too excited. Young gets it outside the logo. Francisco. Yeah, this Mark Logan has come in and, and statistically he's done a good job for the 49ers. He's done a good job of, of catching and running and all those things. But the 49ers don't need another weapon. And I think this offense, I think, really misses Tom Rathman. I think Logan's done a job and, and he's given them some numbers. And you can look at the numbers and say they haven't missed Rathman, but I feel that if there is an ingredient that's keeping the 49ers out of sync, I think it's Tom Rathman. Logan is out now, replaced by Dexter Carter, but this is Ricky Warner. He doesn't get much. Tony Tolbert, Tony Casillas. Shut that run down. Yeah, you look here, here at the right well, side of the line now. Casillas is a guy, he's taking on a double team. You see now, he shouldn't make the play. 
He just got at the bottom of the pile. In fact, he really, he really didn't. He just piled up things. You know, he, in the old days, you used to say when Harris Barton and Ralph Tam, when you get double teamed, you just grab grass. You just go down and grab the grass. Artificial turf, you just go down and get turf. And that's what Casillas did. Just don't lose ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just make a pile there. Double Let's team, go. make a pile. Right. Hit by Brown, but he will have enough for the 49ers to move the chains. I think the 49ers offensively, Pat, are probably figuring out a couple things. That we have to get Ricky Waters involved more in running the ball, and we have to get Jerry Rice involved more in catching passes. We have to calm Jimmy Johnson down. We don't need to get him more involved. <laughs> Turn around and all of a sudden the ball is there. That's completion number 32. I know, and he has some sweet moves too, doesn't he? I mean, that was the thing. You see more and more players, they get on that sideline and they go out of bounds. And that time he got on the sideline like he's going to go out and just planted that right foot, bounced right back to the inside and got a first down. Charles Haley's back in there. He was a guy. In fact, that last Dallas touchdown, I'd give credit to Charles Haley because he's the guy that caused the turnover. First down, San Francisco at the Dallas 48. Ricky Waters. Behind McIntyre. About four. Right now, let's send you back to New York for an NFL update. All right, Pat, and at Phoenix, Garrison Hurst, his first National Football League touchdown from a yard out. Cardinals lead the Redskins 13-3, to two minutes to play in the first half at Phoenix, Pat. Second down, six. 340 left to play in the first half here with the Cowboys up by three. And Lee into the backfield now, second and six. Should have been picked off by Larry Brown and Thomas Everett, who was back there. Yeah, it looked like Steve Young got hit just as he was throwing it, too, because as you look downfield at Rice, he had double coverage, but it looked like Jerry Rice had beaten the double coverage. Then Steve Young threw the ball short. Because you're going to see Rice out here. He's coming down, and he's going to run a post, and I think he runs right by the two guys. You see him up there on top. See, now he gets right there. See, he is behind him. And the ball was thrown short. Had that ball been out there another 10 yards, that's a 49er touchdown. Third and six. Young's pass is broken up by Kenneth Gant, who plays the nickel when they use the extra defensive backs. And that's where the Dallas defense is so good, when they can get you in on third and long, then get that nickel in there and get Kenneth Gant and Darren Woodson at linebacker position. And they are really tough. And Klaus Wilmsmeyer back to kick. 11 punts. And now the sixth game. That's not many. Kevin Williams back deep for Dallas. Kevin Williams the This is a good kick. Signal and the ball goes into the end zone. A flag down in the end zone. There's a flag on the You know, is there anything plainer in the world than a referee's cap? No. I mean, no how would you buy you one it? of those? How would you buy one of those guys? Would you go in there and say, just give me plain white cap? I don't think anyone has ever bought one of those caps except a referee. They used to wear black hats. But I think it made them seem too evil. Yeah, but at least the, the black caps, they have white stripes. Yeah, right. White is about as plain as you can get. Now, Jimmy Johnson, I think, would like to get his hands on that white cap. <laughs> he wouldn't wear a white cap. 
Well, there's there's a white cap that you could wear in this part of the country. Holding by the left end on the kicking team before the kick. The penalty is declined. The result is a touchback. First down. 3.05 left to play in the first half. 13-10, Dallas over San Francisco. It's Kevin Fagan. He's been out with a bad knee. Had knee problems for the last few years. And then you see Artie Smith is in there. Ted Washington is in there. Dennis Brown is in there. So the 49ers have gone back to a three-man line. You know, you you look at that temperature, and you can tell that the players are, are hot down there. I mean, this really isn't good football weather for big guys, and I don't think it's you know 78 or whatever it is. But there's a the humidity, humidity. is the thing that gets you down here. In fact, there's a a tornado a tornado watch, huh? Right. Uh, yeah, tornado. That's the first. First, you get a tornado watch, and you get a tornado warning, and and in this. In this area, there's a tornado watch going. So maybe, you know, when you get a tornado watch, I think you get some humidity. And big old guys don't like like humidity or tornado watches or any of that stuff. It's time to find another location. Or you get a wedding. Right, yeah, or, or get some cool air blowing on you or something. No, no, if a tornado, you got to get in a ditch. That's Daryl Johnson. Five yards stopped by Martin Harrison. Because with all that, with all that heat, with all that humidity, see it, it takes its toll on guys like Washington and 96 Dennis Brown. You can just see, you can just tell the way they're standing. I mean, you don't even, it, it even hurts you to get in the huddle. I mean, you don't want to take those hands off your hip because you got to breathe too much. You don't, you don't want the huddle. All, yeah, you don't go all the way into the huddle. You don't want the huddle to end. <laughs> you just kind of lean your head in a little and call it a huddle. Second and five. That's Michael Irvin. And it's a Dallas first down. Stopped by Tim McDonald. You know, Michael Irvin is one of these guys that, you know, that plays with a lot of life and loves to play the game and compete and says he likes it when guys are close to him because he could use his body to ward them off. But, and then after he gets the ball, he never thinks of going down. He always tries to get it as far as you can. Irvin has six catches. Two-minute warning. Two minutes left in the first half. A look behind the scenes as sports and science converge. Brought to you by AT&T. During the football season, players can average up to 30 hours a week of strenuous exercise, putting tremendous stress on the feet. Now some players are experimenting with the Dynapro Inner Soul System. After determining specific neuromuscular weaknesses, the athlete undergoes a multi-step program, which involves increasing the density of the arch catalyst in the Inner Soul System. The program results in greater strength and flexibility in the arches, which improves performance on the field. AT&T. AT&T, without a doubt. If price were no object, which long-distance company would business people choose? AT&T. AT&T. For a few pennies of call, AT&T. Wouldn't you? Come on. People said they'd choose AT&T 7 to 1 over anyone if price were no object. And now it may not be. Introducing Maximum Advantage. Now you can automatically get AT&T's lowest price guaranteed in writing when your business spends over $200 a month with... AT&T. AT&T, period. Maximum Advantage from AT&T. The best in the business. Watch the dog show. Okay, we can watch both. Sunday, Miller Lite presents the Wiener Dog Winter Nationals. It's Muffy versus Dogzilla. And here they come, Bob. Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste with less filling, you can combine anything. And Muffy takes it. That's one fast Wiener Dog. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? This is good beer. Two minutes left in the first half at Texas Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. 13-10. Fans on both sides. John Madden was talking about the humidity a moment ago. And it's always the big guys that try and oh, find yeah. the fans. And the, and the other thing is, when you get a break, you see Dennis Brown, he's, he's so tired right now, he don't even care where the water goes. 
but he's not going to have, he's going to have someone squirt it in there. More of it. The guy gave a squirt, he just could more, more. You know, keep squirting water towards my head. Two minutes left, first half, first and ten Dallas. Here's Aikman. Irvin again. Not enough for a first down this time. Aikman's pass to the Michael. About eight. Magruder wrapped him up. You know, and then the tough part, man, I mean, here's Big Dennis Brown. Now watch, he has to go against Big Kevin Gogan, so you not only get the hot, the humidity, the, you know, you know, the tornado warning and all that stuff, but then you have to go against a 320-pound guy in Kevin Gogan, and Gogan's winning that battle. That's about 650 pounds of battle. I know it. Here's Emmett Smith. Emmett to midfield. That will be a Dallas first down. Romanowski made the stop. Emmett Smith, of course, late missed the entire training camp and the first two games of the regular season. Now says he's just getting back into shape. Dear Midas, my brakes were making a terrible squeaky noise. I brought my car to your competitor, and without any inspection, he said, You need new brakes. Then I went to Midas, your manager. Hi, I'm Tom Kirshner. Had a thorough inspection done and said, You don't need new brakes. The squeaking noise is caused by brake dust. Such honesty is refreshing in the time of auto repair ripoffs. Yours truly, Frank J. Ruta. Caesar's Chaser Chaser is back. I just want... With a minute and 21 seconds left to play in the first half. Dallas leads. Their total plays. All right at the 50. Dallas has two timeouts left. The 49ers have all three of theirs. In the first half, this this Cowboy team has done a good job on first down, and that's that's what helps you on second and third down. You know, and, and, and most of the time they're getting over four yards, and that's a big thing. I mean, if you don't make anything on first down, then you're going to have a second and long and a third and long. Second and six. Emmett Smith on the draw. Found a little opening. It closed quickly. Dennis Brown. Kevin Fagan made the stop. It's a Dallas timeout, so they have one left. Timeout, Dallas. It's second team timeout. It's a 40 second timeout. 13 10. Cowboys lead. We'll be back in the first half at Texas Stadium. Now that sun is off the field. So it shouldn't be a factor anymore if it ever was. 13 10, a minute, two seconds left. Hey, Dennis Brown is still trying to get that oxygen anywhere he can find it, and I don't think there's a lot of it down in that field. No. And then, you know, and then he's going again. He's playing that left side, which is the right side of the Cowboy offense, which has that big Kevin Gogan. You know, and that's a big load, and he's a Kevin Gogan's a local guy out of Daly City, California, and right next to him is Eric Williams. So, you know, Brown got this heat to deal with, a tornado watch to deal with, and then Eric Williams and Kevin Gogan to deal with. I don't think he knows about the tornado watch. No wonder he's so tired. It's down. Johnson got enough for the first down. Just nudged it far enough. Dallas trying to get lined up in a hurry. Clock continues to run now with 45 seconds left. And timeout. And what they have to do is they need they need about another 15 yards. I mean they they need you know I mean to get it down there where you know it's a comfortable. They could probably do it with another 10 yards. Uh, you know where it's a comfortable field goal for Murray. Stop the clock with the Aikman grounding the ball. So 
Well, they still have one timeout remaining. So that means they can throw it inside. They got Michael Irvin out here in the left-hand side. They just took the timeout. It was San Francisco took the timeout. I think they were going to throw it to Irvin on the left side. So the 49ers are down to two timeouts left. If they get the ball back. So, Mike, you're one of the last in the neighborhood pharmacists. 13-10, Dallas leading. And again, that was a 49er timeout, so the Cowboys do have one timeout left. So that means that you don't have to throw the ball into the end zone, or you don't have to get out of bounds. You can throw it in. Michael Irvin's best pattern, favorite pattern, is what they call a deep in. Up the field and to the inside. He's on the left side. That's where Aikman likes to look for him. I would expect he'll be doubled. Aikman sacked from behind by Stubblefield as he stepped up into the pocket. That was a big play for that 49er defense because of anything that they couldn't take. Here's Stubblefield right here. If there's anything that the, that the Cowboys couldn't take, it was a sack. Watch him. He's against Nate Newton. That's just a bull rush. He gets Nate up, then he gets him going back and just pushes him right back, then takes that left and whaps Aikman in the head. Now, this is what he was looking at, but if Nate Newton doesn't get his guy blocked, he's not going to throw it to him. He's out there to the right side. There was no one open on the right side. They doubled Michael Irvin on the left side, so part of it was good coverage. Part of it was a good rush by Stubblefield. And the bad part of it was the Cowboys with big old Nate Newton got pushed right back into his quarterback. And when Aikman stepped up, he stepped right in to Stubblefield. With the left hook of Stubblefield. Join Greg Terry and Eric Dickerson for all the latest scores and highlights. Plus a preview of tonight's World Series game two between the Phillies and the Blue Jays. Third and 15. I liked it the other night and the Phillies were playing and big old John Cruck just just blew out the, the back of his pants and played the whole game that way. Yeah. He reminds me of a nose tackle. He ought to be down here in Texas Stadium playing nose. Here is Aikman back to throw. And he does get out of bounds for the first down. And they still have 34 seconds left on the clock. And you could tell that they needed a play. They needed to get into field goal. You know they're going to go to Michael Irvin. They put him on the left. That's where they like him today. And you see how big and strong he is. And he always has a little push for you. And right there, just before he made his turn, he pushed Michael McGruder and then made the out. But you darn near knew they were going to go to Michael Irvin on that play. You darn near knew he was going to push when he made the cut. <laughs> That's how he gets open. Here's a blitz. That was a big comeback from the sack that 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 play to Mike Lurvin because they were getting close to field goal range. They got a sack. They knocked it out. He come right back. Boom. And he hit Michael Lurvin. See, if you look at the last play, you look at how Michael Lurvin set him up. You see, Magruder was playing that deep end that he liked, so he stepped in. So then on the next play, after he got him on the end, then he gets him on the out. And here's the last play. They just flushed Aitman out and he had to run. Johnson flushed him out, second and four. They going to throw. Irvin again. Out of bounds at about the two. He is something. Boy, he's good. He's a playmaker. You know, Jimmy Johnson always talks about playmakers, guys that'll make plays and you get the idea with Michael Irvin that in any tough situation, you know, end of the half, end of the game, you need a play, he wants the ball, and he probably wants the ball more than anyone else on this field. Then when he gets it, he wants to score a touchdown. That time he got it switched to his right hand, but he didn't get close enough to the goal line. And when you have 17 brothers and sisters, as Michael Irvin does, once you get the ball, you do take off with it. The 49ers take this time out. Well, they had to, Pat. They had 12 men on the field. And they had to get someone off, so they had to take the time out. Nine catches. Here's his ninth. Well, you know, he's done everything over here to Magruder. Here he just runs a slant, but then, not only that, but then he runs a slant, and the minute he catches it, 
He's thinking where he can go. He feels Magruder's outside, so he pivots and goes back outside where Magruder's coming in from. He is. That's probably why he's lined up there. Left. We know that Don Griffin is out, and and then Magruder came in and he's been playing that position. So Michael Irvin said, "I found one over here." So he's been playing and catching most of those balls on the left side since Griffin went out. They mark the ball at the three. It'll be first and goal from there with 22 seconds left to play in the first half. And this has to be a passing down because the Cowboys have no more timeouts. There's the pass, and the 49ers are there again with Stubblefield. And the Cowboys don't have any timeouts. Hurry. The encouragement from Jimmy Johnson and from Aikman. Trying to get lined up in a hurry. 16 seconds left. 15 now. Aikman stops it. Just jams the ball on the ground. Yeah, I think Jimmy Johnson knew that he didn't have any timeouts, that they had to get back there, and, and some of the receivers were still in the end zone. In fact, Michael Irvin there was one of them, and they were all telling him to hustle back, hustle back. Michael Irvin said, I've already done a day's work in this first half. Jimmy Johnson's going for another one. Again, he's going for the shot in the end zone, has to throw the ball in the end zone. If it's incomplete, then he'll field goal. Open in the direction of Alvin Harper incomplete. And here comes the field goal unit. He was probably lucky that that was an incomplete pass because Harper would have gotten that ball and then gotten tackled there. They would have had a scramble to get the ball downed again. But you're not going to throw it in the end zone. It's probably better to throw an incomplete pass. Eddie Murray. Trying to make it three for three. Kick is good and it's 16 to 10. Dallas leads. 29 yard field goal by Eddie Murray, the ex Detroit Lion. I think the, the big thing about this first half is not as much as 16 to 10 lead, but is the amount of time the Cowboy offense has been on the field and really made that 49er defense work because they have really drained that defense in this first half. Yet they have been able to come up with only 16 points. Yeah, but I think it's going to show in that time of possession. I think it's going to show in the drain in the second half. Because the 49ers may be surprised with that four-man line in the I think first they half. Did. I think they did. And it was very successful, especially taking away the run to Emmett Smith, or specifically the cutback to Emmett Smith. Dallas has had the ball almost 19 minutes. Keeping that 49er defense on the field. Yeah, and, and the 49ers are, you know, again trying to play a, a big man defense. And when, you know, the big men are the first guys that are going to get tired. And this is probably going to be some kind of squid kick or squib kick because squid kick, squib kick because Gant, squid. Gant, Gant didn't get back there and fire up the crowd. A line drive kick. It's a squitter. It's a squib kick. <laughs> it's into the end zone in any case. With the 49ers down it. Ten seconds left in the first half. Seven seconds, beg your pardon. I think the 49ers are probably just going to, obviously, they're just going to run this out and go in and, and kind of regroup and and get refreshed and, and do all those things. The Cowboys will again probably be talking about that four man line and making their adjustments to that. 49ers will probably be thinking about how they can get Ricky Waters more involved in this game. 49ers as you said will just run it out. So that's the end of the first half with the score Dallas 16 San Francisco 10. at Texas Stadium. The Cowboys leading the San Francisco 49ers 16 to 10. The 
first back at Texas Stadium Pat Summerall John Madden 16 10 the Cowboys lead the 49ers and let's look at some of the first half statistics we'll look on that way well you can see that guy McIntyre was trying to fire this 49er team up because they had things going early and then in the second quarter they seemed to lose the momentum you could just see they're getting beaten in in rushing yards and and they're getting beaten in passing yards they both had have a turnover but the big thing Pat to me is, is still this time of possession where the Cowboys had the ball almost 19 minutes and that wore down that 49er defense it is definitely not as hot as it was earlier when that sun was on the artificial surface